Hey, what's up? This is Marty. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm showing you how I make tab animations for my videos. So the way I do it is uh, by animating it in Blender. Uh, that way I can uh, change any elements uh, like the colors and uh, shapes and uh, any movement. Uh, my method is uh, quite time consuming, so if you want the fast results, uh, just uh, screen capture your Guitar Pro software. There are already uh, videos on uh, on YouTube how to do that. Like you see here, I just uh, typed in tab in video and uh, there's... Uh, I think the first one is uh, with screen, screen capture. So here's uh, how my tabs look like usually. It's just my preference, but you can uh, make it look uh, any way you want. Uh, with any color and uh, uh, any kind of movement. Another way you could do it, Kali. So the software I use is, first of all, Guitar Pro. I also tried Tux Guitar, but uh, that doesn't let me uh, set up the bass as I want to. I basically want it to be uh, one continuous line. I'll show you later what I mean. I also use uh, GIMP. Uh, you can use any uh, image uh, software you want. And uh, finally, I use uh, Blender, where I uh, animate everything. Uh, basically, it's not uh, classical animation, but it's uh, sort of mo motion graphics where you insert keyframes like point A to point B, and it will animate uh, anything uh, in between. This is also great software. I use it uh, for all my video editing, and uh, you can also... Uh, basically do uh, 3D and uh, all kinds of stuff with this. So it's uh, great to learn this. The only software in this list that is not free is uh, Guitar Pro. Uh, if you if you find a way to do it in Tux Guitar, or maybe you just have uh, shorter tabs, then you can do it in Tux Guitar. So uh, you can get away with it. So I will give you a little overview of how the process will look like. I'll just make a text document and... I will divide the process to steps. So the first step is... Uh, is making sure the tab is correct. This is very important because uh, usually you will uh, discover that your tab is wrong uh, inside the uh, Blender. So you have to come all the way back to the first step. And so the step two is to export the tab as a PDF from uh, Guitar Pro. Step three is uh, to import uh, PDF into GIMP. Step four is to export uh, from GIMP as PNG image uh, and also creating the pin in GIMP as PNG. In this process, I will usually do the mask as well if I need any. The step five is to import everything to Blender and uh, prepare prepare it for animation. Step six is animating, and uh, this is probably the most uh, time-consuming step from uh, all of these. And finally, step seven is uh, rendering. I'm pretty sure this uh, depends on uh, your CPU instead of GPU. So now I will show you each uh, step closely, starting with the tabs. For this example, I'm doing a video for Angel Vivaldi for his uh, Patreon page, uh, where he has a series called Licks for Kicks. And uh, he's, he's teaching uh, licks from his own songs and uh, also a series uh, of uh, uh, mode lessons, lessons about modes and uh, music theory. So as you can see, I'm using uh, an older version of uh, Guitar Pro. I'm sure you can do everything uh, with the new one as well. Right now I'm just making sure that the uh, tab is correct, that it will match with uh, whatever he's playing in the video. I already know it's, uh, it's it should be correct. So now you can choose the look you want. Uh, I like when the rhythm is down here, like this. Uh, sometimes I also uh, cut this uh, rhythm part that, uh, away in GIMP, so it's just a plain tab. Because the, uh, when you're animating it, uh, you will animate it to the music anyway, so you don't really need the rhythm notation. 
if I'm happy with the look, I will go to page setup. Uh, right now it's uh, in the standard uh, page format. But I want it to be uh, one uh, continuous uh, long line. So I will make um, it uh, longer hor horizontally. Like this. I also don't need... Uh, this will do actually, but... Uh, I also don't need the title or page numbers and uh, I will make the proportion to 200% uh, so it's nice and big but uh, I'm not sure if this is necessary because uh, if you import PDF uh, to GIMP you can basically scale it up and down with uh, no uh, pixel loss now I will uh, export it as a PDF it will give you a little preview of the of how it looks and that's fine now that we have our PDF it's time for GIMP I'm pretty sure this is how it looks by default uh, I will go to file, I open open the PDF uh, I will keep all the settings uh, that it gives me here Now I will uh, choose, choose the crop tool right here, click on it, and uh, I will crop this uh, part. Uh, I will just crop it like this to the line here. And yep, it's done. So now I will go up here uh, to the image tab. I will choose canvas size. Right now it's uh, horizontal. It's uh, eleven thousand pixels, and uh, I will. I want the height to be uh, three hundred because I think it's. Uh, this will be basically how it will sit uh, without scaling uh, on your video. Now I will choose the align tool here. Uh, choose align center. Of target ah sorry first I select it you see the little you see the little um, thing here now it's selected so align center of target and align middle of target here and if I zoom out you can see so the canvas is uh, 300 pixels and this will be in the middle here so I also don't need it to be that wide but never mind it can it doesn't matter really it just makes your computer do more work so now I will choose uh, a layer a new layer here uh, and I want uh, a white layer now it uh, went on top here but I, I will drag it down like this and now the tab is in top of the white one so I choose the tab I uh, right click on it I mer merge down, so now it's just one layer like this. And uh, with the layer selected, I will go to colors up here and invert. So now it's white tabs on black background. So now I will uh, choose the gradient tool here. Here's the gradient settings that I'm using. The gradient mode is uh, on arrays and you can see all the other settings here so I can just come here and uh, and add some gradient to it some feathered edges so to do that uh, I'm just uh, clicking with the left mouse button and then uh, releasing it and pressing enter and you also have to make sure that it's uh, straight because it uh, uh, with your mouse you can basically uh, tilt it uh, both ways so now I'm pretty happy with the tabs I'm not going to mess with the uh, uh, opacity here because uh, then I can choose how much opacity I want in uh, Blender so now I can uh, 
export and make sure it's PNG so now I also need the pin uh, I, I've been using a pin like uh, this for for most of the time it's just uh, 1080p canvas with uh, the pin in the bottom here I don't know why I did it like this but uh, that's what I've been using but uh, right now I will make a new one I will uh, choose a new canvas and this time I won't make a 1080p canvas but I will make uh, only the pin the height uh, of the tab was uh, 300 uh, so I will, make, I will make this a little bit longer, maybe 320 and 340 so I can uh, add a gradient to this as well and uh, horizontal length I will make uh, 4 I'm just uh, kind of improvising right now color is already yellow but you can change the color with the bucket tool choose uh, yellow here and ta -da. So now I will choose the gradient tool and uh, if I can get it to work I still have the mode on arrays, opacity 100 um, shape linear offset I'm not sure why it's not working though it should be maybe if I add a new layer white layer yeah now it's working so um, Yeah, so I will paint the white layer instead. I will paint it yellow like this, and uh, now I will use the gradient. Yeah, that's good. Uh, hit enter to the other side. Okay, and I will export it as PNG. Here, export. So now it's done. I will use this pin this time. Uh, so now I have uh, all the elements and I can uh, import them into Blender. I also downloaded the 2.9 version. I usually use uh, 2.7 because I just started with that but um, it will greet you with uh, this pop-up screen right here so all the settings should, should be uh, similar to what you have I will just click uh, left click on this and now go up here there is a little plus tab and choose video editing now in here um, I don't really use this uh, not even sure how it closes in here okay I will just drag it here and uh, we need this yeah so in here uh, under this tab here playback uh, choose uh, audio under audio choose uh, AV sync and also scrubbing yep that should be it so now this is our timeline here where you can arrange uh, all the images and uh, videos that you have so I will insert um, I will import um, mm, a movie so that would be the movie that I'm using here now that it imported uh, you can see that it's uh, the blue one is the video track and uh, 
Yep, and the green one is audio. So, and when I drag it here, you can hear it's scrubbing the audio. And that's what you need basically to um, to get the pins in the right position. I will show it later. So up here, if you click on the video track, you will see uh, under time you will see the length. So it ends on seven six six four, and up here I will do the same seven six six four. So the whole project up here will uh, end. It's actually the rendering will end at uh, 7664 and it uh, automatically chooses the same frame rate that your video has. So whatever you import here first, it will choose this frame rate. Now I will go to the beginning using this button here. I will add, uh, I will add our tabs. This is here. Uh, right now it looks like this. Uh, you have to click the. It's already alpha over, which is good. In older versions, you have to uh, change this as well. But in here, it's already fine. So you will click the offset button, and uh, also under the time, you can duration seven six six three. Durations. So I changed the duration of the tabs to be the same as the video. And now when I click on the timeline here, you can see it's uh, it's on the screen at the same time as the video. So under the offset here, uh, you can change uh, under, e under the Y axis, you can change the uh, uh, vertical positioning. So I will choose it something like this. I would prefer the, if it's not uh, on top of his hands or guitar, but uh, uh, right now I'm not going to put it like up here, so that's fine. I will add, uh, I'll go to start again here, and I will ha add um, or pin um, image. So this is our new pin. Same thing, offset, yep, and uh, time, S what was it, 7663. So now it's the same length as the video, everything is the same length. Um, but right now it's um, on the left side, so we'll go to offset and under under the position X, we need it to be in the middle and the Y axis here. It doesn't have to be exactly in the middle, but kind of. You can also see it's, uh, you can already see it's a bit uh, too tall, but uh, I'm not going to change it right now. You can just make it, uh, if you also made the tab uh, 300, you can uh, make the pin uh, a little bit... Uh, I made the pin like 340, but you can make it uh, 310 or something. Now that we have everything inside Blender here, uh, the first thing I do usually is uh, uh, animating the opacities. Uh, so when the video starts, I want uh, these two to have zero opacity. Uh, and that's here. I just drag this down. So right now it's just zero opacity. And uh, I will zoom in. And uh, probably, probably from here I want them to start showing. So I will hover my mouse over this uh, number here and click I on the keyboard. Uh, same with this. Now, right here, I 
Uh, let me show you this. So I, so I clicked uh, I. Uh, so by clicking I, I inserted uh, keyframes uh, for both uh, the pin and uh, the tab opacity. And uh, that just means that uh, at that point they will be zero. And now I will drag my video to the point where I want them to uh, be the final value. So. So right here I am uh, hearing the first uh, beat basically uh, coming in like the, with the symbol and uh, you can also hear the pick attack long before that but uh, when the uh, symbol hits then it's uh, probably a, a correct uh, placement. So I will um, at that point where we are right now I want my pin to be at full opacity which is 1. I will just uh, click, uh, I will just type in 1 and press I while hovering over this. So now it inserted, now it has two keyframes you see. Uh, first is uh, 0 and second is 1 and it will uh, smoothly animate it uh, to the next keyframe. And uh, I will choose the other track and that one I don't want uh, full opacity but uh, 0 0.8 uh, actually. 0 0.8. Yeah, I think 0 0.8 is good. And also press I. So now there is two animations already. Now I will find the spot where he stops the playing so I can uh, animate the pass it to go to 0. So right here I can already see he stopped uh, playing and I will uh, insert keyframes for the animation, for the opacity. One here, for this, one for this, both at the same spot. And now I will drag it forward a bit. And just when his uh, scene changes, uh, it will I will have these opacities zero. So now we have uh, opacity animation at the uh, front and uh, at uh, uh, in the end. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back, everyone. Since this is uh, all I'm going to work with uh, in for this tutorial, I'm going to uh, add my end right here, which is two, three, nine. For the next step, uh, I need to animate. Uh, I need to have the tab part at the right spot. So I will click this uh, tab file. I will go to offset, and the position X is the horizontal position. If I drag it to to my left, like this, you see it's mi minus four thousand. Then it will show. It, it will start showing here. But uh, it it has this funny bug that you can't uh, go past minus 4000 and something at some and some points it will uh, stop uh, going forward so i just need to manually go past this uh, by typing in the number like this oops yeah i did uh, i did the positive number so like this and i can drag again now if i zoom in I will I will leave it like this so uh, it will have two parts at first he plays these two bars then this uh, tab will change over and then it will play the other parts and uh, you can uh, of course you can do it uh, any way you want you can basically have the pin in the middle and just uh, animate the uh, start and the end of this uh, tab section here.
uh, now when we listen to the spot uh, where the tabs should change uh, over to the uh, third and fourth bar. Yep, this is fine for us right now. It could be a little bit snappier, but uh, I'm noticing that uh, when I'm recording my screen with uh, OBS, that uh, also my blender starts to lag a bit. For the next step, uh, I will animate the pin. At first, I I want to locate uh, the very first uh, beat. This is where he starts playing, so I will have my pin chosen here and uh, take this position to to the first note here and uh, press I. So I can see uh, that his um, last note of this is right here, of this bar. Last note of this bar is here, uh, but uh, my tab is already changing the position. So I will uh, locate the spot where my tab is not changing the is about to change the position. But uh, I will um, have a look where the where his fingers are at that spot. Right now I'm at the position where uh, his, uh, where my tab is about to change over to the next two bars, uh, but his finger is uh, on the one, not on the five. So I will uh, put my pin right here on the one, and that's fine because it's uh, still it's go it goes by so fast with this sixteenth notes that it uh, won't even matter as long as it's uh, staying at uh, relatively the same position. Now, since th here is a gap between these two bars, it will mess up uh, sometimes. Uh, so I will check uh, that uh, this part here will uh, be in correct time. Right here I'm uh, hearing that uh, he's actually just starting to be on this note. So uh, I will move this back a little bit. And insert another keyframe. Right here, I want it to be on this one. I think at least. Let's see. Yep, that's it. So, again, uh, right here, the symbol hit, so uh, that's the first beat, and I will move the pin right here. So, it should be correct. Oops, something went wrong. Oh, okay. Just the tab. Uh, I moved the uh, tab uh, a bit uh, 
longer before. So I need it to be here. Right here, I'm. I think I'm on this uh, spot right here, so I will move it here. And right here, he hits the last card. I like to do a little uh, slide here when he he's doing a slide out then I would like to have this follow along a little bit just for the effect welcome back okay. not sure if it's not sure if it's necessary but Let's see. Well, yep, I think that's fine. So, another thing that uh, I want to show you is uh, masking. If you, right now it's uh, just the tabs on top of this video, but when you look at my uh, my channel, then you see I'm doing uh, a little bit uh, masking here a little shape so I will show you how to do that I already pre-made this uh, tab mask so it just uh, needs to be an image with uh, black and white image with uh, where the black is uh, what shows through and the white is what uh, stays in the video maybe I'll just uh, uh, show you how to make it in uh, GIMP as well Now I have my GIMP open, I will use, I will uh, choose a new canvas, 1080p, zoom out and uh, I'll just delete this one, remove layer, delete layer and uh, add a new layer a white one and add another one which I will paint black using the paint bucket here and then I will choose uh, I will flip this and on the white one with white one selected I will take the gradient tool and just go like this and enter left click drag it as you want and enter and it's done basically inside of blender I will go to the start add my image tab mask I will add the tab mask uh, also make it a little bit longer um, at, under the time tab here and um, this one I don't want to ha have alpha over alpha over for the mask I don't want it to be alpha over otherwise it's just uh, over everything else so I will make it uh, alpha under and um, under the modifiers tab I will use uh, mask modifier here okay now I got to work so uh, what I did wrong is uh, I applied modifier to this mask uh, channel but I uh, actually had to I, I deleted the modifier here and uh, 
this one I kept uh, alpha under like I did uh, before uh, in the 2.7 and um, I just forgot that uh, you have to add the modifier to this one so that's the tab uh, layer and I have a modifier where I select the mask for this mod for this channel so the mask will be this one I just chose this tab mask here and it will mask it like this now the last step is to render and uh, up here on the right corner you can find the render settings basically they are right here uh, this is the output properties uh, keep the resolution uh, whatever you want uh, I recommend you keep the resolution like this and if you want 4k you just upscale this to 200 like so and it will do 4k and I want uh, 1080 so I will give it to 100% frame rate is correct so moving on there is uh, I will choose uh, desktop for my output I usually have the file format as uh, FFMPG video and uh, RGB uh, encoding I will use there's some uh, pre-made settings here so I will choose uh, H.264 in MP4 it should make it yep so it's MPEG4 and uh, H.264 I will use the high quality and uh, speed uh, good uh, and make sure you select some audio codec so I will use mp3 stereo channel yep bitrate okay everything is good so everything else should be fine now I will save it and uh, up here you have a render option and uh, once you are done here you can click render animation uh, I will close my OBS to do that so see you in a little bit now it's uh, finished with the rendering and here's the final result <laughs> Also, uh, important thing to note is uh, I did everything uh, on this timeline here, but um, uh, if you have a lot of uh, keyframes, like if you have a lot of different types of keyframes, like uh, these opacity ones and uh, for each element separately, then it's uh, sometimes good to use uh, uh, Dope Sheet, uh, which is uh, basically an overview of uh, all of your animations. And uh, the way you get it, uh, I'll just open it in a separate window here. Uh, okay, so I opened it uh, down here, but uh, you can see the point. Uh, so that's the dope sheet. Um, it will show uh, on the left here, it will show all the animations and uh, uh, all the types of animations like uh, a blend opacity of uh, this element here and a blend opacity of the bin and uh, like a summary tab for this so you can in here you can select all these points and if you are a little bit late or a little bit uh, uh, early with your keyframes then here you can uh, really zoom in and uh, really fine-tune it um, with uh, visually seeing uh, everything and also if you have uh, like uh, this, this video is actually like a longer video then I usually uh, when I'm done with the opacities, then uh, in here I can usually see uh, the points uh, where uh, I need to do the animations. So I can just uh, click on here, zoom in, do the animations, click on another point, zoom in, do the animations. So this top sheet really helps uh, with animations. So that's it for this uh, tutorial. I hope uh, uh, it was useful for you and uh, I was clear enough. Uh, I know my English is not the best, so uh, if you have any questions, just uh, leave them down in the comment section. Also, uh, please uh, subscribe. 
Uh, I have some uh, interesting uh, videos coming out soon. Uh, one is a little experiment uh, with headstocks and uh, uh, also some recording uh, stuff. So stay tuned and uh, thank you for watching.